Welcome to part 3 of 4 on chapter 15. In this chapter we're looking at the cell cycle, mitosis, and meiosis. So in the first part of the chapter we talked about the eukaryotic cell cycle that included um, the inner phase which is divided into G1, S, and G2. And then we talked about mitosis in the second part. So this third part of the chapter we're going to look at meiosis and sexual reproduction. So meiosis is another type of cell division. In this type of cell division, we're going to take one diploid cell, so one cell that has two copies of every chromosome, and out of that one diploid cell, we're going to create four haploid cells. And this is where you're going to really have to understand the difference between diploid and haploid. And I know I talked about that in um, a previous section in this chapter, so you can go back and kind of review that part. Um, so the four haploid cells, these are going to be our gametes, and they're going to have half the number of chromosomes. So they only have one copy of every chromosome instead of the two copies. So these haploid cells, or these gametes, they're going to be used in sexual reproduction. So what happens is we take one haploid cell, one gamete from the mother, which will be the egg cell, and we take another haploid gamete from the father, which is a sperm cell. The egg and sperm cell, they come together and that's called fertilization, and out of it we get our one diploid zygote. Um, so this is a one-celled zygote. That one cell is going to go through um, lots and lots of mitosis that we talked about in the previous section of this chapter in order to create the fetus, which will then become an individual um, organism. So this part, uh, meiosis, it's really important that we have the number of chromosomes so that when we have a haploid cell and a haploid cell come back together we get back up to our diploid number of chromosomes. So meiosis begins after the cell progresses through um, the inner phase of the cell cycle which again we talked about in the first part of the chapter. So our cell still has to go through G1, it has to go through the S phase so you have to replicate all the DNA it has to go into the G2 phase, has to collect all the material and get ready to go through the cell division. Um, so the G1, S, and G2 are exactly the same as what we talked about in the first chapter. Um, meiosis, it's different than mitosis. One of the differences is we end up getting um, different products that are produced. And two other things is that your homologous pairs of chromosomes in the first part of meiosis, they're going to find each other in the nucleus and they're going to attach to form what's called a bivalent or a tetrad. And I'll show you that in a second. And then once that bivalent or tetrad is set up, we're going to have an event called crossing over or recombination occur. And this is really important to get lots of genetic diversity. Um, and this can account for, along with a few other things, why we look similar to our siblings, our brothers and sisters, but we all look different unless you're an identical twin. Um, so we have lots of genetic variability that is created and put into the gametes to form the next generation. So the bivalent or the tetrad, um, so our two homologous chromosomes, remember our homologous chromosomes are those chromosome pairs. So those two chromosomes are the same size and shape and they carry similar genes on them. So those two homologous chromosomes are going to find each other and they're going to form this bivalent or tetrad. Um, the process of this formation of the bivalent or tetrad is called synapsis. So basically what happens is your two homologous chromosomes, they secrete kind of the sticky substance which is shown in the white um, part of the middle image. and that sticky substance is going to hold your two chromosomes right next to each other. And then you have your bivalent or tetrad that is formed. Once that bivalent or tetrad is formed, you can have this next thing that occurs called a crossing over or sometimes you'll hear it referred to as recombination. Um, so crossing over, it's you're going to have your two homologous chromosomes are going to physically exchange um, between chromosome pieces in the bivalent. And this occurs during the first part of meiosis called prophase one. And like I mentioned, 
this crossing over process is going to increase our genetic variation so we end up with four different haploid cells that each have a little bit of variation in them. So this image is showing this crossing over event. So we have our bivalent set up on our left hand side. Then our two homologous chromosomes are going to switch or exchange pieces of their chromosome with each other. And there's just one crossing over event um, shown in this example, but you can have um, more than one exchange on the same bivalent. Um, so if you look closely, part of the red chromosome exchanged with the complementary part on the blue chromosome. And then once that crossing over occurs, the chromosomes, they can kind of open up a little bit and they form a chisma, which is X. So you see a little X that forms um, with this physical exchange of your genetic information or that piece of those chromosomes. So this crossing over, um, you end up with lots of genetic variation. Just to show you in this example, if you look at the very left-hand side, sister chromatid, it's all red on the left-hand side. The next chromatid next to it, it's mostly red with that little bit of blue up at the top. The next chromosome is mostly blue, or the next chromatid is mostly blue with a little bit of red. And then the final um, sister chromatid on the right-hand side is all blue. So you end up with four different looking sister chromatids in your bivalent from this crossing over. Okay, so we're going to be going through meiosis. Meiosis actually occurs in two separate divisions. Um, and each of those divisions, they are broken down into prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And kind of what happens in these phases, it's very similar to what we saw happen in mitosis. Um, but there are a few little differences that we're going to see. Um, so the first division is meiosis 1. So each part of meiosis 1, it has a little Roman numeral 1 after it to um, tell you where this event is taking place. After you have meiosis 1, which is where we um, put, cut our chromosome number in half, so we start with a diploid cell, we end up with two haploid cells. Then we have meiosis 2. And meiosis 2 is where you pull apart your chromosomes and you separate your sister chromatids from each other. Um, so meiosis 2, this is where we're going to end up with four haploid cells at the end of this. So we'll start off with meiosis 1 and we'll go through that and then we'll get to meiosis 2. Alright, so meiosis 1, we have prophase 1. So our replicated chromosomes are condensed down um, already and they've already been replicated in the S phase of interphase. And this is where those bivalents or tetrads are going to form that we just talked about. Um, in addition to that, as the bivalents form, in prophase, the nuclear membrane starts to break down to allow the chromosomes to get into the cytoplasm. And then in addition, your crossing over occurs. So remember, that's that physical exchange um, between your homologous chromosomes, and that will create more genetic variation. So here's what prophase 1 is going to look like. Um, so we have our eukaryotic animal cell up here. Our centrosomes, we have two of them already, so they've already been replicated. They're starting to move towards their respective poles. Our chromosomes in the nucleus, instead of being um, just in there individually, they're um, paired up with their homologous chromosome to form that bivalent. And then in addition, you have the crossing over that occurs. Um, you can see that on the middle size chromosome and then also the really large chromosome pair in here. And then in addition, our nuclear membrane is starting to break apart. So then we get to prometaphase 1. This is where your spindle apparatus is completely formed. Um, you have your two poles set up that are on opposite ends of your cell. The um, Chromosomes are going to be attached to the kinetochore microtubule, so you're still going to have kinetochore microtubules in your spindle apparatus, and those kinetochore microtubules are going to be um, the proteins that are going to pull your homologous chromosomes apart from each other. And your pairs of sister chromatids are attached to one pole, or I'll show you in the next image what this looks like. So we have our prophase 1 on 
the left hand side and then we get to prometaphase one. So here again our spindle apparatus is set up. We have our two poles established on the left and the right of the cell and we have our bivalence. Um, one chromosome in the bivalent is attached to the left pole. The other chromosome in the bi bivalent is attached to the right hand pole. Okay. So here we have um, these double rows of chromosomes, and then once our spindle apparatus is, is um, fully formed, those chromosomes are going to be, or the bivalents are going to be pulled back and forth until we get to metaphase one. So this is where your bivalents are going to be organized along that metaphase plate or metaphase equator, and they're going to be in a double row this time, because remember, homologous chromosomes are attached to each other. Um, Metaphase 1, it's random how the bivalents are set up. Um, so in metaphase 1, we get a lot of genetic diversity that can also occur in metaphase 1. Um, and this is even more genetic diversity than what we can just get with the crossing over. So here we have metaphase 1 on the right hand side. So now all of our bivalents are on our metaphase plate or metaphase equator and they're lined up. And again, remember, your chromosomes are in their bivalence, so one of those chromosomes in the pair is attached to the left, the other chromosome in the pair is attached to the right side. Then once your bivalents are set up in the middle of your cell, then you get to anaphase 1. So this is where your segregation or separation of your homologous chromosomes occur. So the connection between your two chromosomes and the bivalent or the tetrad break. So that sticky um, white goo between our two homologous chromosomes, it starts to break down, and then your two homologous chromosomes can break apart from each other. So each joined pair of chromatids migrates to one pole, and the homologous pair of chromatids moves to the opposite pole. So one of your chromosomes moves to the left, the other one's going to move to the right. So if you look on the right hand side, we see this anaphase part, so if you look, our mostly red chromosomes moving off to the left, the mostly blue one on the top is going to the right, and then you see your other bivalents are also split apart during this anaphase process. Then we get to telophase 1, so our sister chromatids have reached their respective poles, they start to decondense, and the nuclear membrane is going to reform. Um, you can also have cytokinesis that occurs. So your two new nuclei are going to um, physically separate from each other, so you'll have two haploid cells. So your original diploid cell that had two copies of every chromosome had its chromosomes in homologous pairs. And the two cells that were produced at the end of meiosis 1 are haploid. So they do not have those homologous chromosomes. They just have one copy of every chromosome for this. So meiosis 1, this is where um, it's sometimes called chromosome division because you're dividing the chromosome number in half during meiosis 1. So if you look on the right-hand side, we have telophase 1 and cytokinesis. So we have... Um, three chromosomes in the left cell, three chromosomes in the right cell. And then you can also have cytokinesis, so those two cells will physically separate from each other. So again, just to point out, we started off with a cell that had six chromosomes in total, or three pairs of chromosomes. We're going to end up with two cells that just have three chromosomes each. So again, meiosis 1, we're going to cut our chromosome number in half. Now we're going to go into meiosis 2. One important thing is that there's going to be no S phase between meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. We don't want to replicate the DNA. We want to keep our chromosome number at that haploid level. So at that one chromosome or one copy of every chromosome in each of our two cells. The sorting events in meiosis 2 are really similar to those in mitosis, so I'm not going to um, put the words up of what's happening in each of the parts of meiosis. We're just going to kind of go through the pictures. And the important part is that the sister chromatids are separated during anaphase 2, unlike what we saw in anaphase 1. 
and anaphase 1, we separated homologous chromosomes that were in that bivalent. Anaphase 2, we're separating those two sister chromatids that make up one chromosome. Okay, so up at the top we have meiosis 1 that we went through in a little bit more detail. So now I'm going to go through meiosis 2 and you'll kind of see that um, each of the steps of meiosis 2, they follow kind of a similar um, event pattern to what we've seen in mitosis. So it's a little bit of review, um, but we're just going to kind of go through it in a little bit with the pictures. So meiosis 2, we start off with prophase 2. So this is where our chromosomes are going to condense down. So you can see there's three chromosomes in the top cell, three chromosomes in the bottom cell. Our centrosomes, they start to move towards their respective poles, and the nuclear envelope starts to break down. Once the nuclear envelope is broken down, then the spindle apparatus forms in each of our two cells and the kinetochore microtubules attach on to each one of your chromosomes. So each of your three chromosomes in the top cell and the bottom cell are attached to both poles at the same time. Um, Prometaphase pro 2, then the spindle apparatus starts to pull those chromosomes back and forth until they line up in the middle of the cell, and that is when your cell gets into metaphase. So here we have metaphase 2, all of our chromosomes are lined up along that metaphase plate or metaphase equator. Okay. And here again, I just want to point out, if you look up above metaphase 1, we have our bivalents attached to the two poles. Metaphase 2, we have individual chromosomes attached to the two poles. So you kind of have the same setup, but there is that difference. So remember, Meiosis 1 up the top, we're separating homologous chromosomes from each other. Um, meiosis 2 at the bottom, we're separating the sister chromatids in one chromosome from each other. So to do that separation, we have anaphase 2, which is where our sister chromatids are going to be pulled apart. So if you look at the top chromosome, the all red chromatid goes off to the left. The mostly red with a little bit of blue goes off to the right. And then the other two chromosomes are also pulled apart in a similar fashion. Once those chromosomes are pulled apart, they travel to their respective poles. Then you have telophase 2 and cytokinesis. So each one of um, those poles, they form a nuclei around your three chromosomes and then your cells will physically separate from each other with the cytokinesis process. So now we have one, two, three, four cells that are all haploid. They only have three chromosomes compared to our starting cell that had six chromosomes. And then the other thing you should notice is that each of these four cells that we just created, they're genetically um, different from each other. So you can see there's lots of different genetic variation between our four um, gametes that we just produced. And again, that will contribute to um, why you and your siblings look different from each other, but you kind of have some similar traits because you have different DNA, but you can also have a few similar um, DNA pieces in the gametes that um, help to create you. So meiosis and mitosis, again, they're both um, types of cellular division. And just to quickly go through the differences, mitosis, we're going to take one diploid mother cell, and we're going to replicate all of the DNA and split it so you end up with two diploid daughter cells. And these two cells are going to be genetically identical to each other. So mitosis is used for asexual reproduction, it's also used for growth and repair. Um, mitosis, another thing about it is that it's happening all the time. Like right now while you're just sitting here uh, listening to this lecture or sleeping or eating, your body is going through mitosis. Meiosis, this only occurs when um, you are able to produce offspring. So once you go through puberty, um, then 
special cells in your body are going to go through meiosis to produce um, the different gametes. So meiosis, it doesn't happen all the time, it's just a specialized form of cell division. And it's used again for sexual reproduction. So meiosis, what we do is we have one diploid cell, so one cell that has um, two copies of every chromosome. It goes through those two divisions we just went through and you end up with four haploid daughter cells. So you end up with cells that have half the number of chromosomes in them and those four cells that were just created are not genetically identical. So we have all that different genetic variation within these gametes. And remember the gametes are the eggs in females and the sperm cells in males.